Hello and welcome back to this video series where we're looking at building an e-commerce platform over 25 days using Next, Netlify and Stripe. So first off, congratulations for making it this far. We're up to video two. This will be the first video that will actually be writing some code, which is exciting. Uh, so let's jump right in. So first up, we are going to create our React application. So we're going to be using an NPM package called Create React App. And uh, we can run that by typing npx, which runs something from npm. Create React App is the, the package that we're using to actually um, create our React application. And then we need to give it a name. So in this case, we are I'm just gonna call it my app because I'm feeling super creative. Uh, this is going to ask if we actually want to um, install the following packages. So I'm going to say yes. And once that's finished installing, we should be able to change into that new directory. Uh, so change into my app and run npm start. So that's going to start a development server locally. And then you'll see here that we've got this, uh, this rotating logo. Um, and it tells us that we can edit the source slash app.js and then save and reload um, to see these changes. So if we head back to our terminal um, and I'm going to create a new um, panel by typing command shift and then D uh, and that's gonna open me a new pane here. I'm gonna make sure that I'm still in that my app folder uh, and then I'm going to open this up in VS Code. So you see that has created a whole bunch of files for us, a whole bunch of CSS, JavaScript files, uh, lots of stuff. And we're very happy that someone else is doing all this hard lifting for us uh, so that we can just go into our app.js file. Um, and then why don't we just uh, get rid of everything except the div and our header. And then in here, we are just going to say my new app. And if we save that and head back over to our Firefox, you'll see my new app. So we don't actually need to refresh the browser. That's going to happen automatically as we're, as we're making changes. So every time we make a change here, um, my even newer app, and then save, as soon as we head back over there, it's going to refresh with my even newer app. Uh, so that's super cool. Uh, every single change that we make, it's automatically listening to those changes and refreshing our browser for us. So that's pretty cool. Uh, but what if we wanted to take this super important message of my even newer app and we wanted to uh, render it over and over and over again. So this was something that was really, really important that we wanted to fill up our page with. Um, so the first thing we might want to do is um, take that message and kind of put it into its own little box, its own little component that we can reuse over and over again. So firstly, let's create a components folder under this source directory. And then inside that components folder, we're going to create a new file and it's going to be called message.js. So this is the name of our component is going to be message. So now we need to create our actual uh, React component. And the way we do that is by using a function. So there are a few different ways that we can write that uh, our syntax for our function. We can use the function keyword um, and say our message is a function. Uh, we can store that message in a variable. Um, sorry, we can store that function in a variable called message, um, or we can use an arrow function like this. Uh, so all three of these syntaxes are basically uh, the same, um, but it's probably more commonly used, um, it's, it's probably more common to use this arrow syntax. And so that's what we'll be using for this tutorial. So I'm gonna get rid of these other two, but it's just good to know um, that you can write them that way if you would prefer. So we've created a message variable and we're assigning to it an arrow function. So we need to actually tell that arrow function what we want to return. So what, what markup do we want to return uh, to render on the page? So I'm going to return a paragraph tag uh, that says, my even newer app. So I'm gonna copy and paste that in here and hit save. And then the last thing we need to do here is actually export this function out um, so we can use it in another file. So we're gonna say export default message. Oop, if I can spell message. And then in our app.js file, we're gonna scroll up to the top of this file and import our new component. So we're gonna say import message from and then we want to give it a local directory. So if we do dot slash, um, we'll see that components folder. And if we select some components and then type slash, we can uh, select that message. So now we have our message component and we just need to render it. 
So here where we had my even newer app, I'm just going to get rid of that. Uh, I'm going to create a new line and then I'm going to render out our message and save. And if we go back to our uh, browser, we shouldn't see anything changed. And that's what we we're expecting, right? We haven't actually changed anything. We've just taken that message and we've put it into its own little box. But the cool thing about having that in its own little box is that now we could render this over and over and over and over and over and over, and over again. And now when we save and go back to our browser, you'll see that we have my even newer app over and over and over and over and over again. So this probably isn't the most useful thing to be rendering over and over and over again, uh, but it's just a good concept to understand that a component is just um, a little box that we can put things in uh, and tell it how to render on the page. Um, and so it's like a little encapsulated um, bit of UI um, that we can reuse over and over and over again. Okay, cool. So the last thing that I wanted to mention is just um, where you can go to look at examples and if you get stuck. Um, so if you head on over to github.com and create an account if you haven't done so yet, um, I'll put a link in the description of the video. Um, but if you head on over to this repo, so this e-commerce in 25 days repo, uh, you should see a pretty a pretty bare um, a pretty bare repo at this point. So it's just got uh, the introduction that we went through yesterday. So index.js and then uh, lesson two, which is the React basics that we've just gone through with my app. Um, but I'll be continuing to add to this throughout the course. And so um, this will be the best place to go uh, and look at the examples that I've gone through in the video. So how do you get it on your computer? If you have a look at this little code drop down. Uh, and make sure you have HTTPS um, selected and click this little clipboard, which is going to copy that URL um, to, your, to your clipboard. And then if we head back over to our terminal um, and type git clone and then paste that URL in, it's gonna pull that down. Uh, and then if you do LS, you'll see that we have this new e-commerce in 25 days folder. And if I change into that and do LS, you'll see that we have uh, that introduction and uh, the second video about the React basics there. Awesome, that's everything I wanted to go through in this video. In the next video, we're going to look at um, making a component responsible for retaining its own state, which is a very core concept uh, to React, and I'm excited to show you how it works. See you then.